Hello brothers and sisters, this is Songs of Solomon chapter 7. An introduction to chapter 7 is necessary as at the end of chapter 6 we saw woman wisdom enter the actual physical manifestation of transfiguration within her flesh vessel. The following is the Lord marvelling at his own workmanship in her. 7-1. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O princess daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels. The work of the hands of a cunning workman. <clears throat> now woman wisdom, the physical portion, has been made one with her spiritual portion in Christ Jesus and her Adam portion spirit. Notice, however, he has not yet physically arrived. No, because she had to do this alone. The Lord says, how beautiful are your feet with shoes. This doesn't mean she has a fancy set of heels on her feet. No, 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 no. It means that he is now her feet. He has touched the earth through her vessel. Heaven has come to earth. The joints of the thighs like jewels, like Christ poetically referenced the legs of his new Adam and Adam's as strong as marble. Woman wisdom was made robustly strong. Ah, uh, sorry. Woman wisdom was not made robustly strong in that manner. She is made beautiful in the budding forth of the fragility of her love, and her thighs which carry the feet are moved like Christ's jewels. See Aaron's chest plate of twelve stones. Woman wisdom carries these stones in her walk. Song 7-2. The navel is like a round goblet which wanteth not liquor. The belly is, belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. I actually forgot. I skipped it. I think it was because I didn't make a space. But um, navel like a round goblet. If you have a look um, in a lot of texts, the it was always talking about the chalice of wine. She she's the chalice, okay? The woman is the chalice. She's the chalice that holds the wine. And it wants not liquor because it's not that type of wine. The round go the round goblet, the chalice, it carry it. It's the bearing of the waters of life. Okay, and then the Adam changes it to wine. But he's now in her, see? Christ is in her too. Anyway, we'll get back we'll get we'll get back to that because it comes back around to these things. Belly is like a heap of wheat. Well obviously the, the chaff has been taken away from her. That's what transfiguration does. It separates the wheats and the tears and the cellular structure. It throws away whatever what is not profitable to the Lord in the in the physical body. And yes, there's a, there's a separating of the wheat and tears worldwide, but it, it also happens on a microscopic cell. It happens within each individual temple. And set about with lilies, uh, that, that's referring to her, her ovaries. Her ovaries now bud forth lilies. They bud forth more daughters of Zion. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. Now we've seen this reference before earlier in the poem. And the upper two versions show that her portion increased from here. So the upper three verses, because I missed that verse. The heart... So, you know, before he was just in the heart and now it spread forth down Christ through her legs to her feet, connecting heaven to earth. But we know she births twins and that's because she births forth lilies and lilies in a um, directly domino effect waking up their own atoms. Sun 7-4. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory, thine eyes like the fish pools of Heshbon, by the gates of Bathrabim. The nose is of the Tower of Lebanon, which looketh toward Damascus. Now, okay, I'll get to that in a sec. Her neck, the one, her neck that was once weak and burdened under heavy yokes, which we saw earlier in the poem, is now strong like ivory, yet pure and washed clean. What? Again, she has the eyes of Christ, yet they are fish pools, because the power of, her, her, of seeing her now, after her being transfigured, can draw fish out of the ponds just by seeing her. The nose, well, now she breathes the breath of life and spirit, and dare I say, no longer the counterfeit oxygen that transforms the carbon dioxide, which is death. Hang on a sec, I got it. Um, the, and the nose looks toward Damascus. Now, I've made a reference to it before. The atoms wake up um, to their eaves and to that mystery, just as Paul woke up on the road to Damascus. All of these little details all point you in directions so that you can put it all together. You get what I'm saying? Thy head upon thee is like caramel, 
and the hair of thine head like purple, the king is held in, his, in the galleries. Carmel is a mountain. Her head is like a mountain, like a power and principality. Indeed, she took a light back and now encompasses all the powers now stripped from the fallen ones. Hence, they are angry. Purple is royalty and the, and the king is held within her faculties in the brain. Sun 7, 6. How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love for delight. Oh, he is very impressed with his own work and marvels at her. So, uh, Sun 7, 7. This thy stature is like to a palm tree, and thy breast to clusters of grapes. Palm trees are again pillars. However, Deborah judged under a mountain beneath a palm tree. He, the Lord, is calling woman wisdom now a righteous judge. Her breasts are now as grapes because she has birthed forth the vine, the true vine. Sun 7, 8. I said I will go up to the palm tree and I will take hold of the boughs thereof. Now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples. He's saying, as I promised I would, I would come to you, and I have. And now I will mount thee, my mare, my horse, and I will lead you in my direction by, by my will. Okay, because bowels means pointed. So he will point her in the correct direction by his own will. Bowels is not anything other than to be pointed in a direction. You will now birth forth the choice vine, and your nose, your breath spirit, is like a fragrant apple. Psalm 7, 9. And the roof of thy mouth, like the best wine for my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. She speaks forth his miracles. Mouth of choice wine. This is the beginning of outward manifestation of miracles. She causes the fallen atoms to rise. Oh, sorry, this, I shouldn't say fallen. The sleeping atoms to rise and proclaim the kingdom of God. Psalm 710, I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. A woman wisdom, now transfigured, is without doubt walking the Christ in Christ's blessed assurance. And she knows experientially the depth of his loves toward her. His love, sorry. Psalm 711, come my beloved, let us go forth into the field, let us lodge in the village, villages. Now she's saying this to the Lord now, right? She is not inviting Christ to actually walk into the public places with her. No, she is saying, let's get to work. She's ready to walk the walk and change the world and with him fully established in her down to her legs and her feet so she knows if she steps, he steps or better yet, if he steps, she follows for now she and him are one and he leads. Song 7.12 Let us get up early to the vineyards and let us see if the vine flourish. This is still her talking. Whether the tender grapes appear and the poppy granites bud forth, there will I give thee my loves. She is filled with excitement and eagerness to fill her role as one wisdom. A fullness of understanding has been revealed to her and she now has a security and confidence in the Lord more than ever before. Let us go see. Let us, can, can we go look now? Can we go see if it's done? And she says, there I will give you my love. The works in faith that she will produce, the birthing that she will achieve for the Lord is her offering of love to him. She is overjoyed and not burdened by the responsibility. It is the fullness of the perfect love and every action she does for him from this point is from an experience of his perfect love. Now you notice that her physical atom or Christ in her physical atom has not appeared yet. This is absolutely Christ as the head. She is absolutely totally in love and walking in perfect love with Christ in her and him and her in Christ. And she knows that this other portion of herself in physical flesh as a man will also become part of that. But right now, she is fulfilled just by Christ. You get what I mean? It's not to put man above Christ by talking about Adam's and Eve's. It's all about Christ. And it's all about all of us walking into Christ and walking in Christ. Song 7.13 The mandrakes give a smell and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. The mandrakes giving a smell is a poetic arrow pointing back to the Rachel theme. Genesis thirty fourteen. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of the son's mandrakes. Now remember, Leah wasn't the chosen wife. He was he was tricked. Um, Jacob was tricked into marrying Leah because she was the older sister. So Rachel and Leah was the choice one. She was the chosen one. So Rachel says to Leah. Give me, I pray thee, of the son's mandrake. She really wanted this fruit. So in Genesis 30:15, it goes on and says, And she said unto her, this is Leah talking, 
is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? First of all, it was never Rachel's husband. I mean, it was never Leah's husband. She was tricked. Right? Like, he was tricked. Jacob never wanted her. But she's jealous. And she's like, it's a small matter that you wanted my husband and now you want my son's mandrakes, my son's fruit. Okay, the son's fruit. Who's the son? Jesus Christ is the son. You want the son's fruit? Rachel said, if you give me this fruit, I'll let you have him tonight. I'll let you, I'll let you, he can go lay with you. I don't care. Just give me the fruit. So Rachel was willing to give, give away the husband of the flesh, the husband of the world. She was willing to give away all of that for the fruit of the spirit, for the mandrake fruit. So this is what this is talking about. It's talking about the, uh, the mandrakes give a smell. This is the women who have given away everything. They've let their husbands leave because they hate Jesus Christ. They've, you know, they've gone through hell because they've loved Jesus Christ. And because of that, they are the fruit of the mandrake. Okay, they are the fruit of the mandrake. So, Water Wisdom is saying, to keep it simple, the mandrakes mean the Rachels or the wombs of the double portion, the daughters of Zion, the ones who have been willing to give away everything of the world so that they could be, so that they could have the son's mandrakes, Jesus Christ's mandrakes. This is the point. And when it says, at our gates, and it means, I'm um, sorry, when, it see, when she says, where is it? And at our gates are all manner of peasant fruit. This is the spiritual wombs, the gate of the wombs of these women are all pleasant fruit, all manner of pleasant fruit. And of course, each pleasantry to her own husband, her own Adam. And again, she is saying, I offer my daughters of Zion as an offering to you, Lord Jesus, as a token of my love. So she's saying, I will do this work that you're asking me to do with these with these daughters of Zion. And as, I, as, and as they blossom for you because of what you've asked me to do, that's an offering of my love. Okay? I love you, brothers and sisters. And we will finish with the final installment shortly. Thank you for listening.